Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brian Grin, and today we're diving deep into the most misunderstood topics of nutrition and fitness, and that's based around carb oxidation versus fat oxidation. Now, for years, we've been told that fat burning is always better, and logically thinking, it seems to make sense, but the research tells a completely different story. So let's break down the signs and bust some of these myths as well. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about oxygen efficiency. This is where carbs absolutely dominate fats because when your body burns carbs, it produces more ATP per molecule of oxygen consumed compared to fats. And here's the science. According to research published in multiple exercise physiology journals, carb oxidation yields approximately 6.3 moles of ATP per mole of oxygen, while fat oxidation only produces about 5.7 moles of ATP per mole of oxygen. That's about a 10% efficiency for carbs. Now, this matters because oxygen is often your limiting factor when you're exercising. Whether you're climbing a mountain, playing with your kids, running a race, or just trying to beat your personal best in the weight room or on the track, your body can only deliver so much oxygen to your muscles. So carbs just help you get more bang for your buck for every breath that you take. Number two, it's not about just your physical performance your brain absolutely loves your carbohydrates. Now, I'm sure you know this, multiple studies from leading nutrition and neuroscience journals show that glucose is the preferred and primary fuel source for your brain. A recent comprehensive review published in Food Science and Nutrition found that complex carbohydrates are linked to improved memory, both short and long-term and successful brain aging. The brain consumes about 20% of your daily needs and glucose, as I said before, is its primary fuel. Now, research from the Journal of Physiological Reviews demonstrates that when glucose availability drops, cognitive function declines. We're talking about difficulty concentrating, impaired decision-making, and reduced reaction times. So athletes and anyone doing mentally demanding work needs steady glucose availability to perform at its best. Even mild hypoglycemia, just a small drop in blood sugar causes anxiety, confusion, and cognitive dysfunction. Your brain literally can't function optimally without adequate carbohydrate availability. Now, you might be thinking that if you don't eat carbs for a long period of time, you can survive, and you can, but can you thrive on that? Because your body will do what's something called a process called gluconeogenesis, where it will essentially make its own carbohydrates. Uh, and this is a backup system for your body, but is it the most efficient way to do things? I don't believe so. Let's talk about exercise performance where carbs can really shine. Research from Frontiers in Physiology and multiple sports science journals consistently shows that carb oxidation is superior for any exercise above 65% of your maximum capacity. So here's why, as exercise intensity increases, your body preferentially shifts to carbohydrate oxidation. This isn't a mistake, it's by design. Fat oxidation has multiple bottlenecks that limit its rate, including transport across cell membranes and into mitochondria. A fascinating study published in PMC showed that even endurance athletes who were specifically fat adapted still couldn't match the power output and performance of those using carbohydrates during high intensity efforts. The crossover point where carbs become the dominant fuel occurs around 65% of your VO2 max, which is actually a pretty moderate intensity for most well-trained individuals. Recent research on intermittent sports found that athletes performing sprints showed better power maintenance and faster recovery when using carbohydrates compared to relying primarily on fat oxidation. Okay, so number four, here's something people don't know. Carbohydrates play a critical role in thyroid hormone conversion, which directly impacts your mitochondrial energy production. This is huge for understanding why carbs are so important for metabolism. Multiple studies show that low-carb diets significantly impair the conversion of T4 to T3, which is the active thyroid hormone your body actually uses. Research published in multiple endocrinology journals found that very low-carb diets decrease T3 levels by as much as 34%, while high-carb diets only saw a 17% decrease during caloric restriction. So why does this matter? T3 is the mitochondrial powerhouse hormone. Studies from PMC and Frontiers in Physiology show that 
T3 directly stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis, literally creating new mitochondria and enhances oxygen phosphorylation for energy production. So when T3 drops due to carb restriction, your cellular energy factories slow down. The research is fascinating because T3 doesn't just increase the number of mitochondria, it also improves their quality through a process called mitophagy, removing damaged mitochondrial and replacing them with efficient new ones. So this is essential for sustained high energy output. So here's what the anti-carb seems to get wrong. Being metabolically flexible doesn't mean avoiding carbohydrates. It means using the right fuel at the right time while maintaining optimal thyroid function. So research from the Journal of Applied Physiology shows that well-trained athletes can oxidize both fuels efficiently but they strategically use carbohydrates when performance matters most. A study of over 1,100 athletes across multiple sports found that maximal fat oxidation rates varied enormously between individuals, ranging from 0.17 to 1.27 grams per minute. But here's the key. Even the best fat oxidizers still relied heavily on carbohydrates during competition and high-intensity training. So the research is clear. You can be a great fat burner and still prioritize carbohydrates for performance and thyroid health. These aren't mutually exclusive capabilities. Okay, lastly, let's address some of the biggest myths head on. And one of them is that fat burning is always better for weight loss. The research shows that exercise intensity and total energy expenditure matter more than fuel source when it comes to weight management. Higher intensity exercise, which relies more on carbohydrates, often burns more total calories. Myth number two, carbs make you store fat. Multiple metabolic studies show that carbohydrates preferentially replace muscle and liver glycogen before being converted to fat. So fat storage primarily occurs during a caloric surplus, regardless of the macronutrient consumption. Myth number three, you need to be fat adapted for endurance. A recent landmark study in PMC comparing fat adapted ketogenic athletes the high carb athletes found that while the keto athletes had higher fat oxidation rates, they showed no performance advantage and actually had impaired ability to excess higher intensities. All right, myth number four, low carb is better for metabolism. Well, actually the research shows the opposite. Very low carb diets can actually reduce T3 thyroid hormone by up to 34%, which slows your metabolic rate and reduces mitochondrial energy production. Your metabolism literally needs carbohydrates to function optimally. Okay, so what does this mean for you? Here are some of the key takeaways. For cognitive performance, include complex carbohydrates in your diet to maintain steady glucose availability. Research shows this is especially important for demanding mental work. Next, for thyroid and metabolic health, I wouldn't go too low carb. Research consistently shows that very low carbs for a long period of time can impair T4 to T3 conversion reducing metabolic rate, and mitochondrial energy production. Aim for adequate complex carbs to support optimal thyroid function. And for exercise, I would strategically use carbohydrates around your training, which is what I do, especially for anything above moderate intensity. The research consistently shows that you'll have better power output and reduce fatigue and faster recovery. And for general health, I wouldn't fear carbohydrates. You want to make sure that you are an efficient glucose metabolizer and choosing high quality sources such as fruits, vegetables, even some grains if you can tolerate them and legumes. The anti-carb narrative isn't supported by the bulk of scientific evidence. Remember, your body is designed to use multiple fuel sources efficiently. The goal isn't to be exclusively fat adapted or carb dependent. It's to be metabolically flexible while maintaining optimal thyroid function and mitochondrial energy production. So I truly believe the science is overwhelming. Carb oxidation offers significant advantages when it comes to oxygen efficiency, brain function, exercise performance, especially at moderate intensities and above, and most importantly, thyroid mediated mitochondrial energy production. So the demonization of carbohydrates isn't really based on solid science. It's based on an oversimplified thinking about metabolism. Your thyroid and mitochondria need carbohydrates to function optimally. So when you restrict carbs too severely for too long, 
you're literally down-regulating your body's energy production at the cellular level. That's not metabolic flexibility. That's metabolic impairment. Your body is an amazing machine capable of multiple fuel sources. Don't handicap yourself by just avoiding an entire macronutrient that can enhance your physical performance, cognitive function, and improve cellular energy production. If this video changed how you think about carbohydrates and their role in your metabolism, hit that like button, subscribe for more evidence-based nutrition content, drop a comment below, and let me know, are you going to start to reconsider your relationship with carbohydrates? Till next time, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.